Hey, welcome back to the workshop. So lately, I've been making a lot of chef knives, and they come out great, and I've been real happy with them. But one of the things I've learned is that Japanese-style chef knives, such as the Santoku, are super popular right now. And I realized I really don't know much about Santokus and other Japanese-style chef knives. Maybe I should make one and see what I can learn. I think it's going to be really interesting. Stick around, and let's find out. This project starts out with a bar of AEBL stainless steel, one-tenth inch thick. This pattern is just a picture of a Santoku that I found off a chef knife website online. I don't know whose knife this is, but I like the shape of it, and I think I'm going to use this as my model. The pattern of the knife is traced out onto the steel and then cut out with the bandsaw. After a little cleanup on the grinding wheel and the belt sander, this knife is ready to go straight into grinding the bevels. I know that in the end, this knife is going to get a very tough heat treatment. So I want to start grinding my bevels in now while the steel is still relatively soft. So I've made 30 or 40 knives on this Harbor Freight 4x36 belt sander now. And I can tell you that uh, when compared to a real knife maker's 2x72, these things are seriously underpowered. But if this is all you have, the Harbor Freight Sander will still get the job done if you're patient enough. It'll still do the job, but you've got to slow down and really give the tool time to do its work. The other important thing I've learned from using this sander is that buying good quality ceramic belts goes a long way. I, c I get all of <clears throat> I get all of my belts online now from combat abrasives, and I've found that they cut better and last longer than anything you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or any of the other big box stores. Okay, now that the rough profile grinding is done, it's time to move on to the heat treatment. According to my hardness testing files, the starting hardness for the untreated steel is somewhere between Rockwell 40 and 45. I'm using the heat treatment for AEBL stainless steel as specified on the KnifeSteelNerds.com website. If you ever wanted to get into knife making, but you didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a forge, consider what I've got going on here. My forge setup is nothing more than a Harbor Freight propane lawn torch, blowing fire into a box made out of fire bricks. Not counting the propane fuel itself, the entire setup costs about $60. When I wanted to start treating stainless steel, I did have to invest in a high temperature K-type thermocouple. But if you were only going to do high carbon tool steels, you wouldn't need this. You could just check your steel with a magnet and use this forge just fine. I quench all of my blades in an ammo can full of preheated canola oil. I like to preheat the oil to about 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit before I stick the blade in. According to what I read online, canola oil is a medium speed quenching oil, which makes it suitable for use with a wide variety of steels. Is it as good as a specially engineered commercial quenching oil like Parks 50 or something? No, of course not. But it does have the virtue of being very cheap and easy to obtain, and it's good enough for what I'm doing here. 
after the quench, I'm going to submerge my blade in a mixture of dry ice and acetone to try to get further hardness and uh, reduced retained austenite. Without an expensive temperature controlled electric oven, my heat treatment probably isn't quite getting every last ounce of performance out of this steel that could potentially be obtained. But my goal is to try and get every bit of performance out of it that I can reach within my level of technology and within my low to no budget. A couple hours in the dry ice is probably more than sufficient for this type of treatment for this type of steel. However, I've got somewhere I need to go, so I'm going to put this in the freezer overnight and come back and restart this project tomorrow. By keeping my knives and dry ice in the freezer, I'm going to hold on to my cold temperatures just as long as I possibly can. Alright, so it looks like I forgot to film the last part of my heat treatment, but uh, after quenching and uh, dry ice and tempering in the toaster oven at 350 degrees for two cycles of two hours each, According to my Rockwell hardness testing files, the final hardness of this knife is somewhere between Rockwell 60 and 65, which is right what I was aiming for. According to the uh, information at Knife Steel Nerds, it, with this heat treatment, it should be right around Rockwell 62. Now it's time to get this knife cleaned up and get a handle put on it. Now I don't have any fancy finishing belts for my belt sander, so the only way to do this is uh, lots of soap and water and several hours of good old fashioned elbow grease. Now I'm not trying to take this knife up to a mirror polish. If I can get it shined up to somewhere between a 600 to 800 grit finish, I'll be plenty happy with that. Now it's time to move on to the handle. The handle of this knife is made out of Rich Light, which is a paper micarta product made out of recycled paper. Uh, I like Rich Light. It has kind of a nice honey gold color, at least uh, this version of it does. Rich Light is easy to work with and it polishes up really, really well. Now initially I thought this knife would be best served with a really simple kind of rounded rectangle handle design. And uh, I think uh, overall it kind of didn't work out, but uh, you'll see here in the end. This is something that I confront uh, often as a knife maker. There's a lot of decisions about the design of your knife that have to get made and sometimes you don't realize that you made the wrong decision until the very end. All right, well, I guess kind of for better or for worse, this is what we get with this knife. I'm really not happy with the handle now that it's all said and done. I thought making it simple would be better, but it's just too crude. Um, for holding up here in this, this pinch grip, it's not half bad, it's not uncomfortable. But uh, it's not very pretty either. Um, you know, in a more conventional grip, it's a little bit short. I should have brought the, uh, the front of the handle a little bit farther forward. But uh, apart from being ugly, it should still be a perfectly functional knife. And that's the important thing, I guess. Let's see how it cuts. This is a tough ass tomato. And it doesn't help, there's like a stem in the middle. I don't even like tomatoes. So this would be a good time to talk about one of the things that I run into all the time as I'm trying to make knives. And it's the idea that a small change ruins the whole knife. Now this blade is just fine. It cuts okay. 
And uh, this will be a good knife for a long time. But the handle is just a little bit wrong. And because it's a little bit wrong, it ruins the whole knife. Ruined it so much, I made a whole nother knife that I'm much happier with. This is the same pattern of blade with a more traditional handle. And uh, basically this knife is better than this knife in every way. Uh, this one's also carbon steel, which is why it's all patina, and I've been using it. I use the hell out of this one. I don't even want to look at this one. But uh, it's, it's funny how just a small change changes the entire knife. And that's something to uh, keep in mind. When you make knives, especially when you're a beginner like me, and you're making them in a fairly poorly featured shop, like I am, they're not all going to come out super good. Does that mean they're, they're junk and you should throw them away? No. You know, this knife cuts food just as well as this knife. But this one's a whole lot prettier. And me and everybody else, we like pretty knives. That's something to keep in mind. So not every knife comes out as good as you might like, but as long as we all learned a little something along the way, I guess I'm not worse off for the experience. So I hope you found that interesting, and I'll be right back here in the workshop with another video just as soon as I can. See you then.